All right, so we are going to start now. I think we have two students available. So we are going to start. I believe uh, you were all in the last class, right? Dale and Mickey. Yes, I was in the last class. Okay. So in the last class, we, we tried running a couple of tests and um, we had an error. So let me replicate that. Mark this. Some reason this is taking so much time. Uh, let's wait a few more seconds. For some reasons, we're having errors, so I uh, will simply play the terminal and run the test again.
Yeah. You know, it's like I was I was speaking while I muted myself. So what I'm trying to do here is that I I want to get the detail like this is what I mean. You know, when we raise an exception, when we raise an exception, our exception includes the status code and the detail. All right. So I wanted to see the detail of that exception so that I'll better understand where that particular error is coming from. The four one error we got, I need to understand where it is coming from. So I did that by inserting this line at 56, um, asserting that the detail, there's um, the raised the JSON, the response object is equal to me. And of course it's not equal to me. So when you run this test, the um, it will throw an error like not, not really an error, it will show an assertion failure, which will give us the full detail. And that trick worked. And um, as you can see here, assertion error. We have that, we have that um, asset detail, this is that does not exist, is equal to me, which is false, all right? At least we've seen the detail now. Now the next thing we are going to do is to look for way we actually returned this detail in our code. All right, we will return this detail in our code. So you can actually search uh, on your views code for this particular string. But since I already know where we returned this detail, it was here. It was here um, at um, library.dependencies.org.py at line 47 and 48, at line 47, um, you know, after decoding the user token, we extract the user ID from that token. And at line 47, uh, 47 we get the user that has this ID, all right? Now at line 48, we check that if this user does not exist, that if this user is known, we want to raise an exception with a status of 401, which is the error status we got, and a detail of this user does not exist, all right, which is what we have found here. That means the problem is here. This is where um, this is happening, all right? But now the problem is why? Why is this happening? Because um, we, if you look at our conf tests, if you look at our conf test file, we have a test user, all right? Don't forget that this is the authorized client we used to send the request. And um, we have a test user that we had created earlier. All right, we, we um, encoded a, a JWT token with this user ID. And um, we passed uh, this token to this request header and of course, this is a exists. So why are we getting this error? I believe you can also hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Then I'm making. Yes, okay. sir. We can hear you. So this, yeah, this was uh, this is a very very tricky error, and uh, um, I spent a couple of minutes. Um, that was after the class on Saturday with like the button. So I will try to replicate the steps. Like I will try to replicate the steps here so that um, you will like get an idea of how debugging works in real life. How you hunt for where the bugs are in your code and how you actually fix them. All right, so now the problem is we have a user. All right, we have a user, but it is showing us uh, that um, it is giving this exception, which should not be the case. All right, so what could be the issue? So check first, let us check if we, if the ID, the user ID was actually um, encoded, like, this is what I mean, let me split my screen into two. So the the async client that we the async client that we assigned to to 
to what's that listing now to authorize clients. Yeah. Where I don't where I don't know how where we got it from. Like I I don't know if it's something that was imported. Wait, or, you're referring to this. You're referring to yes. this, right? Yes. The async client. If it's a fixed show created. Okay, do you mean this? Yes. I'm referring to this. Okay. So we imported it from if you go up, you see from HTTPX import a sync client. That's where we got it from. Okay, okay, all right. I saw it was not highlighted, so I was wondering um why. Okay, okay. Um you may be wondering, so this um you can see that some of the packages I imported are are green. Well, some are like white, and there's this, um, there's this, uh, is it yellowish or orange um, orange line underneath it? So, if you highlight it and go up, you see that, it, um, this thing, VS Code will like highlight the issue, and we have that import HTTPX could not be resolved, right? Import HTTPX could not be resolved. What he's trying to say is that it couldn't. Um, find this package, or they couldn't find this package. So the issue here is that even though we have this package, don't forget that we're using Docker. All right. So yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Package. Yeah, it's yeah. it's in the all container, but it's are, not in our yeah. local. Yes, yes, it's not in my local machine. All right, it's not in my Python um, library. But that's why this um, pylons cannot find it. All right, but these other ones have installed them on my machine already. That's why it is green. All right, so, thank you. Um, okay. So um, the first step to debugging this issue would be, we need to be sure, all right? We have to be sure that we actually encode this user ID into, um, like into the JWT we are creating. So what I'm going to do is I'll come down here to I'll come down here. Can you see this try block? This try uh payload is equal to JWT yeah. decoder line twenty nine. So I will print this user ID. I want to show that we actually included the user ID. So I'll print user ID, then I'll run this test and then see what is printed on the on the terminal. All Okay, so um, you can see we have an ID, right? We have an ID. That means the ID was um, encoded. But why is it that we cannot find a user that has this ID when obviously this user exists, right? So the next thing we are going to do is um, I'll go to the test tweets. And right, I'll go to the test suite. Then this user, this test suite, it has a user um, ID within it. This is what I mean. You know, it is this fixture that we created. All right, this fixture text suite, that's what we created, and that's what we are using in this particular test. So, like I showed you in the last class, we actually don't have anything like user in the database. What we have is user ID is equal to this um, ID of this test user. So I'm going to print um, this um, ID of the user. Like I want to be sure that the user was created, all right, that we actually have that user in the DB. So I'll extract that user. User is equal to await user get. Then, uh, Oh. 
Then I want to okay, you know what? I let me use get on all so that you know rebound if that user doesn't like it. Then uh, I want to print user.id. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to be sure that we we have actually created this user. All right. I want to be sure that we have actually created this user for this test so that I can better understand why um, this null check is failing. All right. I really need to understand why this null check is failing. So I'm suspecting that maybe um, we actually didn't create a user for this test. Okay. So let us run this test again and see what happens. Okay. I mean, I'm doing this. Let us see. Friends, Mira ID. Friends, this is the ID. Okay. So let me get. Oops, sorry, this should be test feed dot user ID, not ID. All right, so let us run the test again and see what happens. Good, so let me scroll up. Yes, now we have now we have something very surprising, all right? We have something very surprising. So um we have two different IDs. Okay. They, they should be the same. All right, because he is still the same test user. Don't forget. Maybe, maybe he's recreated it. Maybe he's recreated Test user to um, use test user's ID. Yes, yes, yes. That, that is the thing. All right. That is the thing. We have two different IDs, and this shouldn't be the case. So let me differentiate between the two. I'll call this ID one. Then, um, if me, um, print to his cell, you can differentiate it to him. Okay, so let us look at the list. All right, so here is something we have that um, this is one, all right? This is um, one, okay? That's the user ID that we have in our test. But number two is the user ID that we have um, here at this get current user. Okay. But notice something surprising. There's something very surprising here. And um okay you look at my terminal. You see something like what do you want to show there? Okay, like 
we have we have the two printed printed in our updates in our updates um test updates um endpoints too like yeah i think after after we got the the user from one i think it's referring back to this first this one that was printed in our get current user i think that's the one we are we are getting in our test updates endpoints because they are the same okay, sir. yes yes you observe one thing we have the same user at this script, all right? We have, look at the ID at this script. It ends with the D17, and this one is D17. They are the same ID. For some reason, it is reusing the users. It is reusing the users, but yes, within our test function, or within our test function, it is using a different um, this thing. It's using a different ID. Wow, that's surprising, all right? That is really, really surprising. So um, let me do one more thing. I also want to print, get to the ID of the user that was used to um, create this like send the request for the test create the tweets, right? Yes, to create the tweets. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we don't have a test user here. To do that, I will come to this authorized client. Then this um, this authorized client, right? Because this is the fixture we are using here at test create. So that means, um, this the user it is working with so i'll simply print the id of this user so that we can compare test user dot id then our code is three our code is three now let us run that test again and see what happens Good. So let us look at this. Let's look at this. Yeah. Look at test crates. We have three. Um, you can see at test crates, the IDs are similar, which is right. All right, they are supposed to be similar. Um, the ID that is used to like create this and the ID that is captured at um, dependencies dot um all dot by but but at um test updates we have a different id all right we have this idea two while three and one are very similar so um what i was able to deduce from this is that if you look at this you will see that number number three and one what we printed at three and one are the same thing as what is available at this um, tweet crate. All right. But um, this test user, of course, is created anew because when we printed it here at, when we printed it here within our test, within our test, it gave us a completely different ID. Where is it? Please give me a minute, give me a minute. Let's check the user ID. It's, it's two and three that are the same. Two and... Um, okay, I think it's one and two. No, one and three that are the same. Well, two is... No, two and different. three are the same, sir. One is different. One is different, two and three are the same. Mm. Okay, I'm referring to the test suite updates. 
Hmm? I think it's one and one and three. Not two and three. Okay, one like three. but but if you check, yes, like it's the test updates, but if you check test grades, you see three there again. Yeah. Test grade. Yes, yes, yes. That one is for different um that one is for different tests. Okay, okay. I'm considering okay, this, okay. yes, I'm considering I'm considering all right, all right. so all right. what it tells us is that this um test user is for some reason reused. All right. This test user for some reason is um is reused. Then uh only this is different. But why is it so? Why is it so? So to resolve this issue, to resolve this issue, all I did was to come down here. If you look at authorized clients, you can see that authorized client is um, authorized client inherits client, and this client is defined. This client is um, defined here all right this client is defined here which means and uh, which is defined here and it has a scope of model which means it is um which means it is a single um it is instantiated only once for this particular model as such the the id all right the id with which it is instantiated with is reused per class and unfortunately, we have um, unfortunately we have a fixture that is supposed to clear the database um, at the end of each test class. So when the um, client reuses an ID and um, it sends a request, and at the end of that class, okay, when a client is reusing an ID, but this clean database had cleaned the user that has that ID. So when it sends the request, the the ID will be valid, no doubt. But when it comes to line forty nine, we will try to get the user with this ID, which has been deleted, hence the error. So to solve this issue, um, we can change this scope to class. We can change this scope to class, so that. This um, client is instantiated afresh for each class. Then uh, with that, we can... All right, so when we change the, that I explained earlier, when we change the, the scope of this um, client all right, to class, this means that this client is instantiated a new for each class. It takes the, um, the user ID of that particular class. So as such, we, we don't end up like clearing the database and um, like making that user know, all right? So when you sense that request, the user still exists. All right. The user is no longer null. It still exists in the DB. As such, we no longer have that error, and uh, our test passes. I I hope you get this right. Yes, sir. Can I just come again, sir? Yes, sir. We will. 
Yeah, it's make, it makes sense now. <laughs> it makes sense. Okay. So, so I guess we, I guess the previous the previous test that ran cleared the DB the DB after running. So when it got to our test yes, update, yes. we couldn't match the ID for the one we we had at the at the at particular endpoint. Yes, 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 definitely. Initially, it this makes, uh, makes sense. had a scope of Moodle. Yeah, this had a scope of Moodle, and uh, what this means is that this particular client is instantiated once for each test module. And uh, what we mean by test module is um, like this file, testtweets.py, it is a single module, all right? It is a single module. So this thing is instantiated once for the test module. And, you know, when it is instantiated, it picks just the, um, the ID of uh, that first user it was instantiated. We don't forget that it is instantiated once. So it just picks that ID. And that explains why our first test passed, all right? Because we have not cleared the database then. Then with subsequent tests, it's failing it, giving us that error that um, this user is known. Um, it, it's just raising that exception that relates to user being known. So it's just that we are clearing our database at the end of this test class. So when it goes to, take for example, this is the first class test to create, it doesn't have any issue. So at the end of this class, the database is cleaned, all right? But the test client is still reusing the ID of the user that was available at this first test. So execute a request for this second test class. And as such, um, when we get to this, uh, at line 47, it is projected that, hey, we do not have a user with this particular ID. So to solve the issue, we simply um, we simply modify the um, the scope of this client so that it will be equal to a class, which means that for every class we are creating a new client. For every class we are creating a new client. So that is um, how we resolve that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Please, do we have a question on this before we? we proceed to writing the delete test. And so I don't, it's not like a question per se, but I still have a concern. The, the, okay. we, for the, the last three videos for the classes are still not on, on YouTube. And it's, it's difficult to like, this, since we started writing this test, it's difficult for me to fully follow everything because I missed the first, class where, where you started the writing the test. So it's still difficult for me to comprehend some things and the classes oh. are still not uploaded on YouTube. So I don't know why it is. Okay. Okay. I, I spoke with the program manager. So he said that it has been uploaded, but it probably hasn't been added to the playlist but that he's going to do that. Maybe that's why you haven't been able to um, see it yet, but it will be resolved. It should be resolved today or hopefully tomorrow. All right, thank you, sir. Oh. So, uh, We've not written the test for uh, delete suite, create comments, and delete comments. So I will I will write the test for delete tweet. Okay, then you are going to you know I'm I'm issuing an assignment tomorrow. Your I think stage fourteen assignment. So. The assignment will be about test. Okay, you are going to, I'll ask you to write tests for the endpoints we've not properly covered the test. So how you are going to do it is that you are going to go to the class repository, you fork this repository to your own copy. Then on your own repository, you create a pull request. 
okay, you create your own branch, you create your own branch, and on that branch, you write the tests for this. When you are done with that, you will push, um, you push this test to your own repository. Then from there, you create a pull request. Okay, I maybe maybe I'll send a video on how to create a pull request to you. So you create a pull request. Then when you create a pull request, I should be notified and I will go there and review. So that's how you typically work in a production environment. Like you, when you're working in a team, you really, we really push the master. I don't see how I normally push the master. Uh, in practice, you don't do that. You develop on your branch, then push to that branch, then create a pull request for um, your colleagues to review. So that's what you do. You create the pull request for me and I'll then go through your code and check if it's okay. You then be scored according to that. I hope you understand me. Yes, sir. I have a question here, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Next time. Okay. Okay. This, what's your question? I don't know the question, sir. Yeah, okay, I think today we got a mail from CodeCam that we are done with the first phase of the internship. That we'll be moving to the project phase. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the question is, as in, how will the phase run? I will still, subsequently, we still getting assignments because you mentioned something like promotion to stage 15. So, I'm kind of confused since we are told that we are done with first phase. As in, next phase is just project phase. Is it, as in, the assignment is it based on project or I, I really understand the second phase of the thing. And in regards to we still receiving assignments. Okay, um, there's a real project you guys are going to build. All right, um, like it's a real life project you guys are going to build. So that's what the, um, the internship is all about. I think they will give you guys more details, I think, um, in subsequent days. All right, then some of you that are not yet in stage 14, I think Uche, Uche and one other person, I've forgotten the name. You guys are not in stage 14, so Uche, please try and get the assignments that you missed. I think the assignment for stage 13, complete that and let me know so that uh, you can be promoted to 14 before, I think, today's Tuesday, before Thursday. Yes, sir. Okay, so in, in summary, though, um, you, they will communicate with you or they will provide more details to you. Yes, sir. So subsequently, we'll still be getting assignments for promotional tasks. I don't think so, but I am not 100% sure that it's unlikely that you'll be getting assignments since you are um, obviously working on a real project. So I don't think you'll be getting assignments, All right, but I am not 100% sure at this point. Okay. So the assignments you want to give us is just for normal... Good. Yes, yes this, yes, this assignment is meant to like promote you to stage 15. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. It's all right. Um, okay, so um, the next thing we are going to do right now is to write unit test for test delete, for tweet delete, I mean, or test delete, tweet delete. So to do that, I will move this to this side of the screen. Then I'll create a new class. Then I'll call this test speed um, delete. Then um, um, we'll create a test function. Think it is test, call this test speed delete. Then uh, this function is not returning anything, so I'll decorate the return value to be known. Then I'll comment to the test. Test with division. As usual, we, since this is the method of a class, the first argument will be self, then our second argument will be up which will be of type first API. Then our third 
argument will be authorized time. Authorized um, client, which will be of type async client. Then uh, the port argument is going to be test suite. All right. Now, what we're going to do is um, will be very, very similar to the previous request we wrote. We simply state a race. This race is a short form for response. It's a short form for response. It's equal to await with the rest line dot delete. When you're sending a delete request, you use dot delete. Then, um, which URL are we sending the delete request to? Don't forget it is this URL to delete. So the URL that um, relates to tweet delete. So I will use app dot URL part four. Um, tweet column delete. Then don't forget that this URL takes a path parameter called tweet ID. So I'll call this tweet ID. The tweet ID will be equal to test tweet ID. And um, Yes, we send the JSON, we send data. But then, and when you send a delete request, uh, traditionally, you don't send any data in a delete request. You're just sending the request. You know? So, um, as such, there will be no need for JSON. Right? This JSON is equal to this. So, all we need to do is to assert that um, response dot status group is equal to the um, the status code we are returning. We want to assert that it is equal to status dot HTTP 200, okay? So we'll say that it is equal to this. Oops. Status dot HTTP. So we don't have status in what the So can't we just use 200? Yes, we can we can just use one. really need for if you look at the source code, this um status one it just returns an int of uh, this status of HTTP two hundred okay. It just returns two hundred. So we can we can use 200, right? But let me use status with 200. Then, uh, okay. yeah, sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Yes, I'm, I'm just asking because I want to know. I want to know what's the like, if there's a standard, you know, there are always standard ways of of writing some things in some languages. So I'm just asking to know because I see they are used interchangeably. I don't know if one is a standard and another one is just um, for lazy coders. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you referring to the status? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, there's no standard on that, right? You can use the regular phone one, or you can use the 401 or something. So this um this status uh, module it's just this so that you will um, you know take for example if I were to use something like um, something like two hundred it's too should I say okay, it's, it's not it's not very readable. 
Yes, yes, it's not very, very readable. All right, it's not very readable. And that two hundred is a common, is a common request response. So what if I needed to return something like uh, maybe a response like two hundred seven? Okay, something like two hundred seven. It's difficult to really understand what that does, what it's meant for, what the response basically means. So hence. This status, all right. You know, when we use something like um, when we use something like this, it's more it's more readable. Yeah, it's much more readable. When someone sees this, it tells the person that okay, this is an okay request. Then if it is HTTP, um, maybe two one, the person will easily know that okay, this is a created um a created request, a created responder, no longer. So ideally, ideally, if practical, you should always use. You should always use this. It's not like it is a standard, but for readability, you should always use that standard. But if you maybe you don't have time and you're trying to rush through things, you can just write the the um, the digit and leave it like that. I hope you got me. Yes, sir. Very clear. Thank you very much. Okay. So let us run this test and see what happens. Okay, so this is um, this is successful. Um, now we're going to look at where these print statements are coming from. Strange, strange, strange. Not here. Okay, that's strange. I'll I'll check for it later. We don't have the time for that now. So one other thing we want to do is, um, you know, it's not good practice to just check for the response. Uh, like to, you know, believe that your code is working when you get a two hundred response. Okay, we want to actually check that this tweet has been deleted from the database. So I will first get a tweet, which will be equal to a tweet, tweet dot get on on with an ID of test tweet dot ID. Now I want to assert that this tweet is not. All right, I want to be sure. I need to be sure that we don't have this tweet in our database anymore after sending this delete request. So let's run that and see if our test will still pass. Good. So the test is still passing. That means um, there is no issue with it. Is it open perfectly? So please, do we have any question on on that? No question from me now. No, not from me. Mickey, Ardell, how about you? All right, so my battery is down, so I am going to change the battery on my PC. And um, 
I'll be back within five minutes. And when I come back, we'll look at likes and unlikes. Okay, I'm back. Um, sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay. So we are going to... Yeah, for now, for now, we have a system that allows to... to um, that allows users to create accounts. It allows users to um, verify the account. It allows users to log in and create tweets. Um, what else? Users have the capabilities to. Um, And lady are fixed. All right. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Now we need to let users. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk okay, one sorry, it's time? like um Yeah, yeah, it's I need to go went out from my end. So I was saying that we are going to rush through likes now, but um, these comments will be your homework. Right? You will um, um, build endpoints that will allow users to add comments to it with and that of your, that will be part of the task. But before that, um, so what we're going to do now is that we are going to create um, oops. Oh, I already created in point for comment. So <laughs> I forgot. All right. So yeah, we created so, comments before. That. I'll view the end point you guys saw. Yes, yes, I forgot. So think of the more fitting assignments of you guys. So what we're going to do now is to work on likes. So I am going to I am going to do something here. I'm going to create three endpoints now. The first endpoint will allow um the first endpoint will allow users to create um like then another endpoint will allow users to unlike it. Then um I also create Another um, endpoints that will allow users to retrieve tweets. Okay, so we'll just get to it. So let's start with this. In this router, router dot um, boost. Then um, I think all we're doing is very similar to this. Stuff. 
tests, open tests. So on this. Uh, Like, unless she took the tweet ID, that's the ID of the tweet we want to write. So, name of the tweet. Like, then the description will be like tweet and uh, I'll copy this. Function down here. I'll rename this function to like this. Then um, let tweet of course that is tweet ID. Tweet ID. Then it also okay. Yeah. That's what the parameters are used. Now the next thing we're going to do is to extract the tweet that we want to like. Don't forget, looking at the like model, you will see that each like um, each like um, just captures the tweet and captures the user that created the like. So with that, we are going to do Tweet is equal to a width. A width tweet to get or none. Then I want an ID that is equal to tweet ID. Then if tweet is none, I will then raise an exception. Raise a uh, exception. With With a status code of um, status code of um, status electricity. The four four is usually used when the results we are looking for does not exist, and the uh, detail of this tweet does not exist. So um, you may wonder why I choose to do this. You know, you can equally do something like this. Tweet is equal to await tweet dot get, and um, ID is equal to tweet. Yeah, you know, you can choose to use this, uh, and uh, we are using a model dot get. Um, it gets a record that um, matches the parameters you passed in. But if that record does not exist, it will return a 404, no doubt, just like we are doing here. But the only difference is that the detail of the 404 is usually maybe object not found. All right. I don't want such a generic data. That is why I choose to, that's why I always choose the longer route of um, using get on on because get on on returns the object if the object exists or returns none if that object does not exist so with that i can then check the tweet if it is known if it is known then i'll raise an exception with that same 404 bit a more customized detail all right so that when the client is um, working on this particular endpoint if there's an error it will be easier to um to understand to better spot where that error is from all right, but if it was a generic, um, if it was a generic, this object doesn't exist, it would be difficult to like the point where the error is coming from. That's why I choose to use that open. I hope you understand me. Yes, I understand. Okay. Yes, so sir. With this, so with this, we have the tweet. Now, the next thing we have to do is to create the line. I will come here and import like, then I will scroll down. Um, what we'll do is uh, we'll await like 
the fit like the fit then if you look at this like model you see that like takes a tweet and user so we can easily use something like tweet is equal to tweet right then user is equal to current user with this we are done we've been able to like it purchases it it doesn't need to return anything. The return uh, value here is null, but it doesn't matter as long as we not all um, not all requests is supposed to get a response. Like you don't have to always return a response. But okay. In this case, we can return it. The most important thing is this status group. Right? You should always return a successful status. So um, remember, I told you. That in the database, in the DB, there's no need to tweet. All we have is tweet ID. Right? So it is entirely possible for you to use something like tweet ID is equal to tweet ID. It will still work. Right? Then you can also use user ID is equal to current user that ID. And it will still work. Um, please, do we have any question on there? Okay, this one where you add ID is the same as the previous one. Yeah, without yeah, it's the, the same. Okay. Let me remove one so that it is easy for you to use. So both of these are the same. This tweet ID is equal to tweet that ID. Uh, it's the same thing as user is equal to current user. All right. You know, like I told you, there's none like user in the All you have is user underscore ID. So you can you can save the ID of um that entity you want to put in there and you are not going to have any issue. It will still work for the same. I hope you, you understand, right? Yes, yes, I'm getting. Your volume is a little bit down. I don't know if it's for my own. Okay, is it better now? Yes, uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, um, the next endpoints will be on like endpoints that enables users to basically unlike the tweet. So we are going to do that. I'll do a little bit of copy and paste. I'll call this unlike, unlike, and um, this is going to be like ID. Unlike unlike then unlike tweets like ID. So unlike is basically we take the like ID, then we delete that like from the database. That's what we do with unlike. So we simply await like dot get id is equal to like id dot delete. That's all. We get the like um, with an id equal to this id we've gotten, and um, if that like doesn't exist, it will return a 404 with the generic error message of object not found, then we call delete. Another option would be to maybe use get on on, then um, then you check if it is known, you raise an exception like we did uh, in the previous endpoints, then you manually await and delete. It will still work. That's this is what I mean. Um, like is equal to this, so like the bit for known then we take out this delete. Now we then um, implement this check. We name this to like, like, if like is known, we raise this exception that this like doesn't exist. Then down here, we then await like the delete and yeah, this one. 
ప్లీజ్ ఎనీ క్వశ్చన్ అండి ఓకే సార్ లైక్ దిస్ దిస్ ఎం పాయింట్ నౌ ఆర్ వి ఆర్ వి యు గోయింగ్ సపోజ్ టు బి ఏ పోస్ట్ ఆర్ ఆర్ వి సపోజ్ టు రిమూవ్ ఇట్ డిలీట్ సారీ 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 దిస్ షుడ్ బి ఇట్ వెన్ యు యూస్ పోస్ట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ యు వర్క్ ఇట్ సిన్స్ యు ఆర్ డిలీటింగ్ రిసోర్స్ ఇట్స్ నో స్టాండర్డ్ స్టాండర్డ్ సింగ్ ఇట్ థాంక్స్ ఫర్ పాయింటింగ్ దట్ అవుట్ Yeah, um, I'm also looking. Okay, this is a like. So, um, because I guess it depends on how we are we are creating it. Like, um, if if I'm looking at let's say YouTube, for example, YouTube video. Uh, if you're watching a YouTube video now, there is a like and there's a dislike button. So you can yeah. you can have a video where let's say if you watch a video for the first time, the like is less. If we are relating it to a database now for that video for you now. the like status is non because you have not clicked like the dislike status is also non because you have not clicked that then if you click like the you now have one like if you click dislike you have one dislike and i'm trying to because i was thinking uh, maybe this like instead of deleting i was thinking is something that maybe the the although is i guess is the way the way we created our schema i thought maybe the like would be maybe it will be set to false by default then maybe instead of deleting we are only changing the boolean from false to true or something i don't know if that's the right way to go about it but i guess it depends on how we are creating the app yes 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 i i perfectly understand you well in this case in this case um there is no need to create a default um a default like don't forget that a whole lot of users we we are estimating that like Okay um let me go to the models again say this the tweet you are you suggesting something like this like is equal to field um fields for boolean field with yes something like that yeah to default to false to default to false then okay. okay, we are referring to something like this right Yes. Okay, you know the issue with this is that take Twitter for example. You know, a lot of people you can see a tweet with 300 likes. Okay, 1000 likes, 2000 likes. It will be difficult, it will be impossible for us to uh like track the like count if we are using this method. All right. Let's say it is set to false naturally and I like it, then you go and like it, then um Henshaw goes and likes it. the and all the members of this class goes and then likes to tweet all right how do we track this likes you know on twitter when you click on um there's a way you click on the tweet and you see the total number of people that like that particular yeah. tweet all right so if we are using this method it will not be possible for us to do that okay 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 yeah yeah i hope you understand me so it is much better it is much yeah, easier it makes to, sense yeah, to create a separate model for like and yes, each sir. like is related to um okay please sorry i'll, I'll come to you uh, each like is related to a tweet so that when someone likes we are creating a new like object that is linked to a tweet and is also linked to the user that makes this like so that at the end of the day um to get the number of likes in a tweet we can then get a tweet then we search this like um model for all the likes that have this tweet this exact tweet as the tweet all right from there we can then compute okay how many people how many persons liked this tweet all right i hope you get me right yeah yes yes i understand yeah then uh, as for um, the method we have on youtube all right as for the method we have on youtube we can um, there are two ways i'm thinking of that we could have used to build that we can maybe create a new um model and then call this on like something like it all right because we need to track the total number of people that liked this video and the total number of people that did not like this video all right so we can yeah. create an unlike model then we do the same thing um like we did for like all right for on like then we can then uh put a check in place when someone wants to um 
on like a video we can then check that okay this person didn't like the video before right and then put that check in place then another way we can also go about it is that we can maybe rename this model to something like maybe reaction or something like reaction then we then put an if you liked liked here which could be a boolean a boolean value um use the boolean here then set the default set the default to if true so that um when a user is liking a tweet or he's liking a video we simply create it as it is now then if it is an unlike we create this uh reaction object but with a like value of four. so that is also another way we could um uh, handle okay that. yeah so i think yeah someone wanted to say something sorry about that um someone wanted to say something while i was talking please you can go ahead now okay it's me sir <clears throat> okay. so it's like a question and for the uh, like are we, are we doing a count like to count the number of likes we are having and if it's yes can we just like add in in the model field i like count to it and whoever likes it there will be an, like an auto increment with a positive integer or an integer and whoever likes there will just be an increment by one yes yes if we can yeah sure we can do that yeah we can definitely do that all right you could um you could add accounts here so that when someone creates a like you um go to the tweet and then increase the account or delete the account but i you know uh but this like model will still be necessary because we need to track the user that actually liked the tweet all right we need to actually track the user that liked the the tweet right not just uh if we needed just the count all right we could easily um use the method you suggested but since we need to know the user that liked um the tweet um we, we need to like create a different model for it but we can see we can still also use the two you can see the two you can call this maybe counts is equal to a char field then like use it too but i don't really see any need for it because if we want to return the count of um um the count of the likes it tweet actually have has we can like extract the likes for that particular tweet what i mean is we'll do that in the next same point we do we get a tweet right then uh when we get that tweet we look for the likes that have this tweet as their tweet then we simply you know that will return a query set of tweets and to get the count of the query set in python take for example we have the list is equal to this if these are list to get the count of this list we simply do men of the list can you increase the volume okay can you hear me yeah i can sir okay yeah. okay so yeah, so to get the count of any list in python we simply wrap it with len and it will return that let me okay, let's let us uh do that in our next um in our next end point i think a, a you... scenario where we we'll, we'll use maybe that count is like maybe for views something like views like instagram now when you post something you see how many views the same thing with youtube and the thing about yeah. views is it's it's not only one for each user if you watch a video 10 times it counts as 10 views unlike liking where you can only like once so maybe it's in that yeah. view that they may do that kind of counting i'm, I'm guessing that's yeah yeah it should that's that's a, a perfect use case and uh, also you know when you tweet and you have likes for your tweet you see the counts there as well all right then one um interesting thing is that you don't need to compute this count on the back end or right, this is something that can be done on the front end you simply return that list of likes to the front end and um if they are using javascript you you take the count of um, an array with in python we use len but in javascript is that array dot length 
and it will return the, the size of that particular array. All right, so we don't need to actually return the count from the back end. We simply return the list of these um, likes mm -hmm. to them okay. or the list of the views to them, and they will compute the count from there. So, um, okay. Let us split it further. So, these are the last 10 points we'll be creating here. Um, Um, I will point you to relevant sections of the documentation. So the thing is, we want an endpoint. Okay, let me put the shell for you. We want an endpoint that will get the tweets of a particular user. So we are going to make use of a get request. Get requests, and uh, it should be a get request to get tweets. Right? Then uh, we should also take the user. Then, um, then here are simply parts. So, your assignment will be to fill in this. All right, you fill in the code that will enable a user to get tweet. All right, now here is the catch the tweet you are returning. The tweet you are returning, um, sorry, can you see this? This response model, All right? Can you see yeah. this response model? Yeah. So you create a response model which will define the kind of data that you you are going to return back to the client, and uh, this response model should return the content of the tweet, um, the ID of the user that created that tweet. Is there any need for the ID of the user? No, there's only for the ID of the user. It will return the content of the tweet. Then it will return an array of likes. All right. The likes that this tweet has. It should return an array of those likes. Then um, it will return an array of the comments that this tweet has. I hope you are listening to me. Yes. yes. And Yes, sir, the, array of, yeah, the array of likes that we returned, you will need, um, you return, that array will contain the IDs of the users that liked that tweet. All right. Then as for the comments, you return an array of comments that contains the content of the comments and the ID of the user that made this um, comment. So that is all that you need to do. All right, that is all that you need to do. Now, let me look for um, a good place in the documentation that we can get um, so let me switch the screen back to my browser. Sorry, your mic, sir. Can you? Okay, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's go to Tortoise ORM, read the docs for you. And uh, I'm looking for prefetch related. Prefetch. Good. This is what I'm looking for. You are going to need this to prefetch the relations. Right. So you need to read this up.
Okay, yeah. You need to look at this. All right, you need to look at this. Um, let me drop this on the channel. I didn't want to build that endpoint because this would be a good um, learning opportunity for you guys. Right? Okay, so I will drop this. Please go through that. Then um, there's something else that I need to show you. Okay, foreign key. Okay, so can you see this? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is how prefetch letter is used. Okay, you get it to basically um, prefetch the relations of that particular model. Don't forget that we have that tweet, like is a relation to the tweet then the comment is a relation to the tweets. This is how you like prefetch them when you are filtering a particular model. So I would advise you to go through this example. Yeah, I'd advise you to go through this example. Then there's one more thing I'm looking for. Okay, to do this. Um, let's search for binary. Yeah, you may want to go to this model that is showing. Yeah, you may want to go to this as well. Okay, you know, um, 
to make matters easier for you guys, I am going to I'm going to write the this. Two. I'm going to write the tweet open for you guys. I'm going to write the tweet public for you guys so that it to be easier for you guys. I don't want anyone to tell that. Okay. I don't yes, want sir. anyone to tell that. Task. So this is what I'm doing this because I have not, um, there is none of my examples that. So here is what we are going to do. I'll create a tweet of the class. Then um, this tweet public one is going to be shared mobile. Um, shared mobile. Then I want each tweet to. Okay, we already have a tweet public. We already have a tweet public. Let me say tweet is public. That we inherit from tweet public. Tweet um, public. Then we already have the content. So I need each tweet to have a like. All right, it should have a field for like and the field for comment. So how we are going to do this is that um, we'll create, um, okay, we'll update this comment uh, schema to include the user ID. The ID of the user, and I want it to be optional. Yeah, I want it to be optional. Of type UID. So we'll get a comment which will be a list which will be a list of type comments. Yeah, it should be an optional list as well. It should be an optional list. Then if um, this list is not provided, it should default to it should default to an empty list. Then we are going to import list from type. We're going to import list from type. All right, then uh, we need to define the like. Yeah. So I'll create a like. Um, I'll create a like model. A like model which contains just the user ID. Then we'll change this to we'll call this like will be of type optional and uh, it will be an optional list of like public. like public and if it's not provided it should default to your comment list. Now one more thing. The names of these um, the names of these fields should be it should be this related name. Uh, as you can see, yeah, it should be this related name. As you can see, this relation that um, comment has to tweet has a related 
as a related name of comments. So we are going to change this to comments. Then uh, let's look at what we have on likes. On likes, it is likes, please. On likes, it is likes. All right, so that is that. The one more thing, we have to create a class for config. And on that class, we define that ORM node. ORM node. Okay, can you now hear me? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, so we have to define a class config um, that specifies the ORM mode, which is equal to, which is equal to true. Now, give me a minute, let me copy and paste on this. I'm going, to, I'm going to import validator from that list. So what this validator does is that if you want to run some custom code on um, a data that is going through your pedantic model from your um, base model or like your pedantic model, you can decorate this function, the function you want to execute for that particular data with decorator. Then um, this first parameter after decorator is the name of the data you want to work with. But in this case, I want to work with comments. Then this pre equal to true specifies that you want this to, you want this validator to run before any other data validation on the um, Pydanty class. So now we want to um, convert this um, foreign key relation object that you'll be given because this will be a foreign key relation object coming out from the DB. You need to, um, you need to convert it to a list, all right? So um, we need to, Either comment we need to either that to a list right so that's why we return um okay we have this function either comments um either comments list all right then we have this cls that is like self all right yeah you can you can just ignore it okay now this thing, this V you are seeing here is the actual data from the comments. So let's say if you are getting something like 87 in this comment, all right, what do you have here will be 87. Okay, so this V is the actual data you are getting from that particular field. All right, so what we want is we want to convert that foreign key relation of data lists in bracket that same thing for likes for likes. We want to do the same thing for likes. So I'll change this comment to likes. Now I'll change this name of the function to either likes, then um everything else with this. So we are going to we are going to import this tweet is public to the content router. Yeah. 
here. Then we use that as our response mode. So we use that as a response model, but since we are returning a list, all right, we are not returning one tweet, we are returning many tweets. We need to specify list here. Who we'll just tell the endpoints that this is a list. All right, then we get that list from um, typing from typings import list so with this we are done all right with this we are done okay one more thing this shouldn't be optional let me remove it all right. i don't want it to be optional so that when you are writing code that doesn't return um the proper formats of data we are looking for it to try and error. error. Mm. Okay, it should be optional. Why? Because there are certain situations in which we will have um in which we will have tweets no comments that and doesn't no have mm -hmm. a like or a comment. Yes. Yes, no comments, no like. So in such situations, uh, it should give us an empty list. All right, so that is it. That is it. So what you have to do is to um, you come here and you populate this. Uh, you populate this endpoint with the right code that is required. Then you write the unit test for it. All right, proper unit test. You write for it. Um, so I guess that will be all for this class. Let me comment this to uh, the public. Right. So please, do you have any questions on what we did today? Okay, that, any that, question on that, that being that validator, what do you say it is again? Okay, so um, can you see this function? This is V. Um, if you look at this particular validator that we decorated this um, this function with, it took the name of the field that we want to validate. All right. In this case, we want to validate the comments field. Okay. Now this V is actually the data that we are getting from that comment field. Okay. You get me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me rename it to data to avoid that um, to avoid that confusion. Yeah, that's the comments data. Okay, okay, so that's that. Please, do you have any other question? Uh, no, no other yeah, question. There's none from me. Okay, okay. It's all right. It's all right. So that'll be all for today. Um, our next class will be on Thursday. And um, in that class, we'll look at follows. Like how to follow. I think that'll be all until we start looking for how to deploy the um how to deploy the api all right so that's all that's all thanks a lot for attending see you thursday all right sir thank you very all right much. thank you sir mm -hmm. good night good night yeah good night thank you